Wow. Holy crap. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and this Game of Thrones episode, this is without a doubt, in my opinion, the greatest Game of Thrones episode that I have ever witnessed. The stress-inducing <laughs> moments that the that this provided me, I was on the edge of my seat. I was anxiety-written. I was freaking out. It just, oh boy. Range of emotions, let me tell you. First, Avengers Endgame, and now this, in the same weekend. All right, this is Season 8, Episode 3. And the beginning, when you see our characters, and they're all gearing up, they're getting ready, they're preparing for the dead. You see our soldiers, and the Red Witch comes over, makes that spell to turn everyone's weapon into fire. And you go, all right, this is a great head start. We're going to do all right. They all run towards the darkness, which was shot great because you didn't see the the army of the dead yet. You just knew that they were out there. And when those soldiers ran out there and you just heard the screams, you heard them dying and, and you couldn't see it, but your imagination was running wild on what could be happening to them. And then their fires all started to go out and then it just got quiet and everyone else was looking nervous. This was played so well, just the drama. And and then when the dead finally did come out and you saw them just viciously killing people, like you could say that they're zombies, but they're white walkers. And yes, they are the undead. They are people back from the dead, but they're not just mindless zombies trying to eat you. No, they're also soldiers who are chopping heads off, who are or stabbing people, killing people, and they're also very aggressive. The moment when they stop at the fire and all, they're able to to create a, a diversion, or they're able to trample the fire to put it out so that others can walk over them. Like they have a level of intelligence. Yes, they're being controlled by the Night King, but still, this is what made them scary. This is what made them appear unbeatable. Jon Snow and Daenerys on their dragons flying around and blowing the fire and killing as many as they could. That was cool, but still, there was so many of them. Arya is a badass, and I don't need to say that. I don't need to tell you guys that. We've known that she's been a badass for a while now. She's been through so much. And I'm not even talking about the big moment that she has at the end. No, I'm just talking about her with her two-headed staff, and she's chopping zombies heads off and just killing people and then she runs inside and she's hiding out from the dead and then she's the hallway chase and the hound the hound was somebody who was getting scared getting nervous and you can't really blame him he it just looked like there was no chance and i agreed with him but then when he saw aria in danger when he saw that she was close to dying that's when he decided to step up he went in there he saved her I like this. It shows that their bond all the way back in season four is still alive. And and we saw Sansa and Tyrion locked away with that group underground and Tyrion wanting to be out there and wanting to make a difference. I agree with Sansa. There's nothing that he could do. I like that Tyrion wants to do more and that he's not a coward. But no, he was where he needed to be. Jamie Lannister and Brienne, the two of them had each other's back so many times, so many moments when it looked like one of them was going to die and the other one came and helped them. Uh, just constantly, you're almost expecting that she or, or Jamie was going to go. I was fully expecting it, but they didn't. Bronn being weird as he always does and he uses his abilities to, to go into the Raven uh, the Raven's eyes, and he's able to see the Night King. He's able to see what's going on. I was wondering though what was going to happen with Bronn. Honestly, I still don't fully understand what he's become. These visions and whatnot. I know we've sat with him. I know that we've gone through it. But still, there was theories of people thinking that he might be somehow psychically linked to the Night King. I didn't necessarily buy into that, but I was wondering if something was going to come of it. We did get a dragon fight, which was very satisfying because the dragons went at it towards each other. I was hoping to see the the blue fire and the red fire 
go head at it. That would have been a very cool image. The two dragons blowing fire at each other. But no, we saw them just ripping at each other, clawing at each other. Uh, the Night King trying to throw his spear at Jon Snow and at the dragons. And then Daenerys coming in there and helping him. And when the Night King falls off of his dragon. And then Daenerys and her dragon blow fire all over him. I knew that he wasn't dead. It just, when he emerged from the flames and he had a smirk on his face. Just scary. Look, these things don't talk. He's never said a word. We've only seen him ever just walk around or ride his horse and look at things and be stoic. But still, in that moment, he still comes off as scary. And Theon Greyjoy dies protecting Bran. And even though this guy at one time was a piece of shit and did a lot of horrible, horrible things, I still felt for his death. He has had a, a big, huge arc in this show. And so seeing him come full circle, uh, Bran telling him that he's a good man, seeing him at least try to kill the Night King, although you knew he wasn't. When he dies, I still felt something. The Night King goes and attempts to kill Bran. And again, I was waiting for something. I was waiting for Bran to do something. I was waiting for Bran to maybe get inside of his head. Or I was just waiting for something along those lines. And then Arya jumps from behind and tries to jump at him he turns around and grabs her by the neck and i was like oh no we're gonna see Arya die and it's gonna be brutal and it's gonna be vicious and it's gonna be sad and i'm gonna be depressed for the rest of the night and then no she drops her knife grabs it with her other arm and stabs him and i when he started to shatter into ice and then the rest of the army started to disintegrate and go i man I was not expecting that. I don't know if I was more shocked that Arya was the one to get the kill. Or if I was just shocked that anyone died at all. <laughs> because it, it did seem like the dead was going to win. It did seem like uh, nobody was going to make it out of here. And so the fact that they won and the fact that it was Arya who did it. So satisfying. Such a cheer, cheer moment. And so the army dies. Ian Glenn, who was always the protector for Daenerys, almost her bodyguard, and he was also in love with her, he died protecting her in her arms, and that was a noble death for him. We see the Red Witch grow old and wither away, which we've seen her get old before, and I guess that's her true form. But this was almost like this was her purpose, and once she fulfilled it, I guess she was willing to die or able to die. And that's the end of the episode. <laughs> I'm telling you, almost an hour and a half of just battle, pure gold. Uh, man, again, I don't know where we go from here. I don't know how we're going to end this. I know that the preview showed that there will be another war with Cersei for probably complete control and the throne. But it's almost like, is that even worth it? Do people really care about the throne at this point? We just survived the dead. But once again, I loved it. So guys, let me know in the comments below. What did you think of this episode? Did you like it and love it as well? I really enjoyed it. Man, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later.